I have the dubious pleasure of introducing you to some of the pitfalls that your students will face when they get to high school. And it's interesting because I think every student does face some or most of these things that we're going to chat about now. And I also think that most parents think that their ch children will not go through them. Uh, that is the pitfall. Um, you're good people. You've done a great job. It's not about you. It's about this crazy adolescent time, this time of high school where certain things uh, just come up and, and your child is now away from you more and responsible more, hopefully. Um, so let's talk about some of these things. Like Mr. Doolittle said, high school is hard. I mean, life is hard, right? High school is hard. It's hard on kids to go into high school. It's a scary thing. I've talked to a couple of you out there tonight. You're nervous about high school and you're in good company. Most people are. In fact, the first day of school every year, here I am, a mom, grandma, administrator. I've been here for 15 years. I'm nervous every first day of school, every new year uh, that we have. I, like a child, lay at night thinking, I gotta fall asleep. I can't sleep. Why am I not sleeping? Um, and I know your kids will be the same way. It's exciting and it's scary, but it causes a lot of stress. And uh, s stress is a pitfall in high school. Um, this of is illustrates what the emotion is, you know, freshman year is like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Sophomore year, they're kind of over it, but then it begins again. Now we've got to take SATs, start thinking about the process of finding a college, and then college app stage. So we thought that was a great illustration for what our kids go through. Um, stress comes in all different forms. And you know, there is good stress and bad stress. Not all stress is a bad thing. Um, the stress of a wedding, or the prom. I mean, these are stressful events too. But then you add into that homework, test, the college process, SATs, um, your social life, peer pressure. It is a stressful time. And most of our kids are just developing what they need in order to succeed and make it through this really stressful time. Um, extracurricular stuff and their social life comes to play a lot. And I'll tell you, my own son, who's, he's 30 now, but he graduated from Western back in 2005. And he uh, started as a 4.0 student. He came from Foothill Christian. I don't know if there's any Foothill Christian people out there, but he came from Foothill Christian, and came as a 4.0 student. And in ninth grade, he tanked about a two point something. And I was thinking, what is happening? Here's my perfect child with this 4.0, and, and what happened? Um, they have to learn to manage their social life, their academic life, this peer pressure, the extracurriculars. He wanted to play sports. He was a cute kid. The girls liked him. You know, all of that stuff, they have to figure out. So sometimes, um, I, I tell parents all the time, it's perfectly normal to see that fluctuation happen in grade nine, to see some things that you did not expect because this is a kid who's been a 4.0 student the whole time. High school's hard. Um, along with stress, there is peer pressure. And this is the scary one. Um, the scary part to peer pressure is about to lose some of your influence. Uh, up to now, You've been the main voice. You have been the mirror for your children. They're now going to have other mirrors. There are going to be people who will speak into their lives and speak to them in ways that, uh, that maybe you haven't. Um, introduce them to things that you hope that they'd never have to see. Uh, but all of those things happen in their high school years. This is a time when they're trying to, flit, to fit in. Um, looking for how to be an influencer or who will be influencing them. These decisions are hard, it, it's tricky. Um, we, we teach a couple of courses here that uh, hopefully induce some confidence, um, help them to learn how to make decisions. Our, our health course in our, in our PE uh, program, part of the health course has a, a section on how to make decisions. Um, so they're, you know, teaching them that your behavior has consequences. Everything has consequences, good or bad. And so you've taught them that. 
It's nice though when other people are reinforcing what you've put into them th their whole lives. The loss of identity, another scary part to teenage years. Um, I think it's a good thing though. They're asking themselves, who am I and why am I here? And again, as Mr. Doolittle told you, we have courses that will direct them down this path along with you and, and feed them the healthy things. Um, talk to them about how they've been designed and who designed them. And so trying to figure out who they are normal in high school. In fact, don't you want that to happen in high school, right? When, in a safe place where they can make mistakes and get back up and have people alongside them that will walk them through that. Uh, you don't want them to try to figure themselves out when they get to college, when you're not there and we're not there. Um, so this is a good time for them. Rebellion. Well, first of all, I think we've all seen rebellion at different times in our children's life. You see it when they're two. You see it again now in high school. Um, again, they're trying to discover things about themselves and how they've been designed. Um, they're working through things and it's a healthy thing for them to push on boundaries. It's healthy for them to try to figure out uh, where those lines are. You've uh, developed lines in your family. You can do this, you cannot do that. We have some healthy lines here as well. And so when a student is kind of facing that rebellion, um, again, a place to happen is now. Uh, you don't want them to do that when they're 18 and responsible to the law and have to go to jail for some of that rebellion. You want them to kind of push back on the boundaries in a safe place. Um, rebellion comes in a lot of forms. They might be wanting to rebel against parental authority. They might even try to rebel against who God is and how God has designed them or things that he wants for them. Um, I think, I think it's a safe time for them to do it, and I think this is a healthy place for them to do that. Um, so I have some solutions for you. Um, these are not exhaustive by any stretch of the imagination, but things I've learned. Again, I told you I am a lot older than all of you, and I have um, children and grandchildren, and so I have watched this process, and I can share with you some things that I've learned and some things that we learn here uh, about raising teenagers and being in a healthy environment. Don't take it personally. It's not about you. This is their deal. You've done what you needed to do. You've done a great job. You've raised great kids. It's not about you. Kids have all been born with, uh, like we say, the original sin, right? All of us, there's wicked in all of us, and um, everybody has free will. They all get to make choices. And so what you've done is develop a way for them to make healthy, good choices. Like me, like my children, they're going to make some bad choices. It's not on you, it's not about you. Um, help them to take responsibility for who they are. Always speak the truth to them. Speak the truth in love. Help them to see uh, the good. Help them to see the things that might be harmful. Um, discuss sensitive subjects with them. Uh, it's not a time to shy away from that stuff. So speaking the truth in love is, is vital at this point in their life, especially during the times of the sensitive subjects, you know, the, the things that high schoolers will face. You have to be the parent. It's not time to check out. This is when you have to kind of press in. In fact, you have to be more about parenting now than even when they were in elementary school. Um, there are things about parenting a high school uh, person that are different than parenting an elementary student. Now, I know that this is changing rapidly, but technology is a scary thing. It is not safe. You need to be all about that. You need to understand technology. You need to know how to use it. You need to be their friend on Twitter, Instagram. If anyone uses Facebook anymore, I don't know. But you need to, you need to see those things. In fact, sorry students to say this, but your parents should have your passwords. There, there should be no place where your parents can't go because it's not safe out there. Um, we all have an enemy. And that enemy is looking for ways to control. And he starts with our children. And that's a scary thing. 
So the, the internet is not a safe place and technology is not safe and it should not be private. So we in my family had a computer in the living room. It's not in your bedroom and uh, you don't have private access to anything. Um, I also had content filtering software at home, like we do here. We've invested a lot of money to make the internet a safe place here. We're teaching responsible um, social networking, internet citizens, citizenry, and so partner with us. Um, partner with uh, your student. Help them to see the pitfalls. Remember I talked about speak the truth? Tell them how dangerous it can be. Show them that you're there to protect them and not to kind of take their fun away. Um, it's time for you to not give up, but to help them to see who they are and it's not connected to what they do. You love them. You love them whether they're an A student or a C student, and so do we. They need to see themselves as valuable and designed by God. And now is not the time for them to feel the added pressure of disappointing uh, anyone. Um, they need to feel completely loved and supported and safe. Um, so it's not about what they do, it's about who, who they are. And help them to see that they don't need to be the same as everyone else, but it's okay to stand out, to be unique, to look different, and to act different. Um, we have amazing students here. And I would say that uh, the ones who are strong and are, are comfortable with being themselves, um, it, it's a beautiful thing to watch. You see them lead. You see them become the natural leader that God gifted them to be. And so help them to know it's okay to stand out a little bit. Always uh, do what's in their best interest. Again, it can be a tricky road. We sometimes get enmeshed in our kids' lives, right? Sometimes we make decisions wishing that we had had that for ourselves. Um, but this is a totally unique individual. It, again, don't take it personally. It's not about you. This is, this is a child, and they have been designed by God in a unique way. The Bible says to trust that child in the way he should go. And so do what's best for them. Do what's in their best interest. A look at decision making, uh, the law, the world here. We don't let kids drive a car when they're 14. We don't let them vote when they're 15. They can't drink uh, or uh, serve in the military. I mean, all the things that we look at as being responsible and um, valuable and having some lasting impact or, or any of that, they don't make those decisions at 14. They can't just walk into DMV and say, I've decided this is what I really want. So don't let them make other decisions that aren't in their best interest. You don't need your kid to be happy. You need them to be safe. You need them to be healthy. Um, and, you, and you want them to be with you in eternity. So hard decisions have to be made, and you're the one. Uh, and we're here to partner with you. Like Mr. Atwood said, we don't want to take that away from you. That is your job. We're just here to tell your kids, honor your parents. What, what did your mother say? You know, speak to your mother kindly, um, those kinds of things. So make sure that um, because you're the most qualified and the most experienced that you're making the best decisions for them in their best interest. There is one more thing. And it's probably the most important thing. And without doing this uh, solution, the rest of these solutions will have no value. But I'm not going to tell you what that one thing is. I'm going to let Mr. Atwood speak to you about that.